Welcome to Life Group, and I'm so glad that I get to be here with you today. Now before we get into the text I want to talk to you about today, I would like to take you to a time not so long ago. In fact, I want to take you to a time about two years ago at the beginning of summer out on the beautiful softball diamond. Now, I should let you in on a little secret about me, and that secret is I actually get really, really excited about this time of the year. Now, I'm not sure if I get excited because it's the beginning of summer or if I get excited because I get to compete with others in softball. But whatever the reason, I really get amped up and I want to give everything that I can when I'm playing softball or really anything that's competitive. And this first game of the season two years ago was no different. This was my second time up to bat in the very first game. And I hit the ball and it was a great hit and I take off for first, running my heart out. I get to first base and I think to myself, because I have to go all out, even in church softball, I think, you know, I can make it to second. So I get to first and I round first and I start to head to second, only to see somebody who is, well, let's just say a lot faster and a lot bigger than me with the ball. So I turn and I dive back to first. And when I dove back, I hit the base only to dislocate my elbow which would eventually take me to the emergency room and then bring me to a place like I'm sitting right now, which is the medical clinic. Because when I dislocated my elbow, I also chipped a bone in my elbow and I had a tiny fracture as well. Lately though, my elbow has been really bothering me, so I went and got it looked at. And the bone chip, which is supposed to settle, is actually still in there, which is causing my elbow to still hurt sometimes. And actually because I overcompensate for my elbow hurting, the pain has worked up its way uh, up my arm and my shoulder has been even hurting. <clears throat> I tell you that story because I believe that is exactly what Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians 12 verses 12 through 27. When he is talking about how the church should function. In these, scripture, Paul, in these scriptures, Paul talks about the body of Christ and compares it to our actual physical bodies. In verses 15 through 20 of 1 Corinthians 12, it says, Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. Now if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Now, if we were to look around the church and actually, if we would take a look around in the room that you are sitting in right now, go ahead, take a look, take a real quick look, you would see that there is a lot of diversity in the church and even in the group that you are in right now. Some might think that is a bad thing, but actually, diversity isn't a bad thing at all. The differences that come with diversity can be a beautiful thing if we realize a couple of things. The first thing that we need to realize is that we all have a part in the body of Christ. There is not one person's role that is more important than the others. We are all called to be part of this body, with Christ as the head of the body. In fact, in verse 25 it says, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. We cannot work against each other, or be jealous of each other, or rejoice when somebody else might fall. That stuff happens when we think that our role is small and insignificant. Honestly though, it doesn't matter how small you think your role might be or how insignificant you think your role might be. If you are in the wrong place, you could be causing pain to the kingdom of God instead of helping the kingdom of God. Just like this little tiny bone chip in my arm is causing more pain to other parts of my body. But if it was taken care of or even put back into the right place, my body would be functioning in a more efficient and better way. We need to work together in the place that God has called us to and be there for one another. 
and help when one might be having a difficult time. And rejoice with others when things are going great. Just like it says in 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 12:26, If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. If you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, then you are a part of his family, which is the body of Christ. And now we are one family, one body, and we need to work and function as that. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13, it says, For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. If we, as the body of Christ, want to function and do great things for his kingdom, then we cannot have inward fighting. We need to realize that we have a part in the body of Christ, and it might look different than the person sitting next to you, and honestly, that's all right. This brings me to the next thing that we need to realize. There's no room for comparison. We see in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 15 through 17, how Paul uses the example of a foot and a hand and an eye and an ear. They all start comparing themselves to each other and essentially they all say, if only I could be that, then I would be more important. The ear says, if only I could be another part of the body, then I would have made it. I would be so important. And because I am not an eye, then why am I even here? These body parts start to compare themselves to each other. But in verses 18 and 19, Paul comes back with, but in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? We can also see in James 3.16 what comparing yourself to somebody else does. It says, for where you have envy or selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Theodore Roosevelt said, comparison is the thief of joy. We can see how true that statement really is after reading those scriptures. Comparing yourself to somebody else just brings envy and it's really just a form of selfishness. And those things together bring disorder and every evil practice. Comparison can and will really steal all the joy from you and even from the kingdom of God, which we are trying to build, not tear down. If you want to know what tears down the kingdom of God in a quick way, it's inward fighting. It's when the body of Christ stops functioning and doing what God has called us to do. And we start comparing ourselves to the person next to us and wishing we had what they had. Since we are talking about the body and I'm sitting here in a medical clinic, let me give you an example of this in our body. This is just like an autoimmune disorder. An autoimmune disorder is where your immune system, which is actually set up to attack bad tissues, starts to attack its own body's good tissues instead of attacking just the infected ones. When this happens, the body breaks down and in many cases becomes deadly. That is exactly what happens when we start comparing ourselves to others within the body of Christ. We can't function and we can't work at doing what God has called each of us to do because we are too busy fighting things that we should actually be helping. Each one of us has a unique gifting and ability and when we find that within the body of Christ that's when we are going to see our faith expanded and we will see others come to know that the Lord is good. This brings me to the last thing that I want to talk about with you today. We need to realize that God has called you to do great things for Him. He has called you to, to this place for this time. One of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible is Esther 4.14, which says, For you remain silent at this time. Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. So first thing is that you need to realize that God has a calling on your life. That calling on your life is to first grow close to God personally. But it doesn't stop there. 
Your calling is to also grow the kingdom of God. What does that look like for you? Maybe that calling is within the church, the physical building. Maybe that calling is to running sound or cleaning toilets or helping fix things around the church. Or maybe that calling that God has put on your life to build the kingdom of God is doing something out in the community. Maybe it's being the best employee that you can be. Instead of giving just half at your job, your calling is to be the hardest worker your company has ever seen. Maybe it's something as simple as picking up trash wherever you see it on the ground. It does not matter how big or how small that you think your calling might be, it matters that you realize that you are called. And guess what? You are called for such a time as this. And that means you cannot let something little affect what God has called you to do. You cannot let the comparison game or any unforgiveness or any unresolved sin mess up the calling that God has in your life. You need to get that taken care of, whether it's your fault or somebody else's fault. You need to get it resolved so that you can function like God has called you to function. Just like I can't let this bone chip in my arm affect the rest of my body for the rest of my life. I need to go and get it taken care of so I can function and do all that God has called me to do. You are where you are for such a time as this. And having others around you that are different, it's a good thing. Don't let that hold you back. And don't compare yourself to, to anybody. You need to pray and find the place that God has for you within the church and within your community. And then be the best at it that you can be. My last word of encouragement for you today is let's be the body of Christ like God has called us to be. Let's lift each other up and push each other to do what God has called you to do.